Is it time for a new ironing board cover or a mini ironing board cover? It gets to a point where your ironing board gets water stains, it gets trashy looking, and it just needs to be replaced. I'm Jan Howe from YouMakeItSimple.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how easy it is to make up a new one. items and things that you'll need to make your ironing board cover are pins, a pair of scissors, a yard and a half of quarter inch elastic, some kind of marking device that you can use on fabric. This is a chalk pen or you can use a, a, a even a pencil will work. A yard of fabric of your choice, a cotton piece. I'm using for this particular one, I want a white cover so this is just a recycled um, sheet that I'm going to, going to use. A package of bias tape, wide single fold. You can also just use about a yard and a half of single fold bias tape that you make yourself. A seam gauge or a ruler. And you'll also need a sewing machine. Let's gather your goods and we'll get started. So just take your ironing board, place it down on the fabric with the wrong side facing up and we're going to measure and trace around the ironing board at one and a half inches. So if you needed new padding as well, you could use um, batting, cotton batting, or another piece of thin foam. You just cut that out the same size, or, or even just this, the same size minus the outer one and a half inch to give you some padding if you needed it. So here's a time-saving tip. When you make your pattern, initial pattern, you have traced around your the edge of the ironing board and given yourself the inch and a half. I've made a pattern. Instead of just using that and having to, when you need to make another one up, having to retrace your ironing board, simply before you sew it up, lay it on another piece of, this is just a recycled old sheet and I'm making a pattern so that I can next time I wanna make another ironing board cover, I'll just get out my pattern. Instead of having to measure and trace it all over again, I have this pattern I can just lay out and quickly make up another one. Flip your fabric over so the right side is on top and let's take the bias tape and we're going to place it right side down with the little pre-folded edges aligned with the edge. and pin it in place. You can actually just take it to the sewing machine without pinning and sew as you go, which sometimes I do. What I really like about bias tape is it's going to curve around the corners really nicely. So just pin around the whole thing. So when you come around to the other side, you're going to take the bottom piece and fold it over a half inch and then overlap the bias tape and cut, we're going to cut it so it's overlapping a half inch so that when we fold it over, we'll have a nice finished edge there that we can slip the elastic through. Just line up those edges, pin it in place. 
So you can see how nicely it, this bias tape goes around the corners. And we'll just take it to the machine. We're going to sew right in the ditch, in the crease there of the pressed, pre-pressed edge right in there. We'll sew it all the way around, back stitch at the beginning and the end of your seam. Now that we've sewn all the way around, sewn the bias tape all the way around, we're going to just fold it over on the net where it was pre-pressed and bring it to the edge of the, the seam, the stitching that we just made and top stitch all the way around just barely on the inside of that bias tape. So sewing all the way around and then that little flap, see how we're, I'm gonna, that's doubled over that half inch right there. So just fold that top part over and bring it to the front. And that leaves a little hole here that we can stick the, the safety pin in and thread the elastic through. So you can pin all the way around, but I'm just going to hold it as and sew as I go. We want to just sew just on the inside of that bias tape edge. And I'm going to back stitch for the beginning and the end of the seam. I'm lining up the edge of the bias tape, which is with the edge of the stitching, the previous stitching line. And see how nicely that bias tape just curves and curves around. Now that we've sewn the bias tape all the way around, take a small safety pin and attach it to the end of your elastic and we're going to thread it through that little hole that was left in the bias tape. And just thread it through all the way around. We'll pull it out at the end and sew the ends together. Poke it out the other end. See how I'm pulling the elastic through, holding it on, holding it tight here, and then dragging it to pull more elastic in. So I don't lose my elastic back through the bias tape. I'm just going to stick it in so that when I pull it through, it doesn't go back in. Just even out the elastic. Up to about like that and then we'll put it on. Put your padding down. It'd be easier just to do this. Put it upside down. And give it a pull. Clip your safety pin and we'll pull it so it's tight and overlap the ends. We're just going to take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to pin that in place where I want it to be. I'll just take it off the ironing board.
pull that out so you have room to sew. And we're just going to overlap that stitch, stitch across there a few times and cut the extra elastic off. So I sewed the elastic. We're clipping the, the extra elastic off. And notice that this end is flipping out. So I'm just going to take my scissors and tuck those raw edges inside. the point of my scissors. Now those raw edges are tucked inside and so that doesn't fray when you want to wash this. I'm just going to take it to the sewing machine and sew right on the edge of that, the bias tape, the fold of the bias tape. Now that I've finished this seam, let's go ahead and put it on our ironing board. Have it nice ironing mini ironing board cover a finished edge so that you can wash it easy to get on and off a bright color fabric for your sewing room ready for your ironing mm -hmm.